Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Um, it's um, Saturday. <clears throat> and this morning has really been a kind of an emotional one because um, God really has me. <clears throat> Sorry for my voice. Um, we ministered last night and I think my voice is you know, kind of rough, but, um, I'm gonna make this work. So as you can see the title, when God restores last night, we ministered a message on my, on choices. Um, and it was literally on, um, Abraham, Abram and Lot on the decisions that they made and directions to go. And, um, <laughs> And yesterday I had an opportunity to listen to one of my daughter's um, minister. And it was, it was like a, a roller coaster. Um, I was very emotional, but I got an opportunity. Can, um, I needed to. God wanted me to hear something. And so she said that she had a message, but she didn't know that that message was for me um, to see and to know that he's restoring all. You know, my focus when I, you know, came back home, it was more on my um, immediate family. You know what I'm saying? It was my wife and my, you know, my biological children and all of this. And, but, um, Stephanie was a part of our family at like 13, 14 years old. And so she really got to see it all, you know, like the, all of it and understood it all. And she was very gifted and God entrusted me with her. And I made bad decisions to, um, walk away from a lot of stuff and, and thinking, I, you know, walking away from my family and I walked away from her too. And so it altered her life. Um, it took her in, in, in some bad places. It took her in, in some emotional places. And so listening to her talk about it yesterday was like listening, going back to my biological kids and allowing them to express themselves how they felt about my decisions and how my decisions have affected their life. Um, can I tell you, it was like twisting in my heart. It was like, you know, I mean like really just, I don't know. I, I just had a whole bunch of emotions and I just didn't even know how to deal with them. So I just asked God to help me, help me to, to um, to adjust to this, um, it was it was very very very, it was very emotional, but you know when I look at it and God says, look at it, I'm restoring it all. That put it all in perspective. It, it was like I'm I'm constantly getting layers of deliverance, so it's not necessarily, oh I'm just delivered out. I don't, I don't, I don't, there's nothing. No, there's layers of deliverance. There's things that I didn't, I forgot things that I don't remember, things that I've suppressed. And God, God is the way he is. And so, oh my God, he's just so good. He He knew that I can just give it all to you right now, Gerald, because you wasn't ready. I You have to build, I have to build you up. I have to build your stamina up. I have to build your, your courage up. I have to build your language up. I have to build your mindset up. I have to build your stability. I have to build he had, he, I had to, 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 to build that stuff, you know, because I wouldn't have been, I wouldn't have been ready. I've, I've done that stuff and I crashed. I've done that stuff and I crashed. And so over the years, I, I, I was able to, to just build a battle plan, build uh, um, a prayer life, build my vocabulary for my declarations, build, you know, the word, you know, putting the word in my heart, you know, things that I had to do 
and I constantly do. Cause people are like, oh, your your husband is your, your husband is delivered. You 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 know you're delivered. You don't you don't have no issues. The devil is a liar. Listen, I constantly go through deliverance. I understand. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. So when y'all think, you know, oh, they'll be back and they get delivered. Once they get delivered, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Once they get delivered, they got to they gotta understand how to stay delivered. And so this was a place of another level, another layer and a level of deliverance for me. Because I didn't, I didn't think about my spiritual children. I didn't think about the damage that I did to them, the hurt that I did to them, the pain that I did to them. And I realized I never apologized to her. I've I never apologized to her. We've been talking. We have be back. She's in the army. She's flowing. She's doing. I, but me, the father, the one that God says, that's your daddy. I've never apologized to her. Hold on. Not, a, not only did I affect her, but I affected her marriage. Now she's looking. She, 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 she could have had the, the perspective of a marriage the wrong way. Not only did I affect that, but I affected her kids. Come on, y'all. My decisions, my decisions, my selfish decisions that I made, I made. I, I, nobody else ain't make this decision for me. I made this decision for myself. And I've caused a ripple effect. A ripple effect. So let me let me let me let me ask you. Has any of your decisions, any of your decisions, has caused a ripple effect? I mean, some of your if your decisions is good and there's a ripple effect and everything is good, that's great. But if you made some bad decisions and you got a ripple effect and and it don't not it don't not only stops with you. But it stops with everybody around you. It just rolls on to them. And sometimes we don't even think about, listen, we don't even think about the pain we have caused. Until we can sit down and God just remove the scales off of your eyes. Unplug your ears that you can hear the pain of the people you hurt. See the pain of the people you hurt. I'm looking at her and I'm listening to this testimony. And man, I wanted to just pour out. But if I knew I poured out, she was going to break down. Because we have that type of a relationship. She's not even my biological daughter. But she has all of our mannerisms. She has our DNA. And so this was a, a, a real, real, it was really hard, but it was a real blessing to me. Because I watched God right before my eyes restore Restore another one of my kids. Right, I mean like right in front of my eyes. So when I say God restores all, when God does it, he has a, a very, very unique and special way of doing things. And when you do it his way, when you inquire of him, when you ask of him, when you're making these decisions to do things and you're inquiring of him, listen, you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. But what it does is it goes against all of your flesh. It goes against all of your intellect because you'll be trying to systematically figure out how to do something, especially if you're a, 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 a person that's, you know, dot the I's across the T's and do all of that. Man, God, God will mess you up. Because it, it wouldn't seem like it would be logical to do what he's saying you should be able to do. Seriously. It, it wouldn't even seem logical. But what God does is totally different. And so I, I just, I wanted to, um, you know, come on and, and, and encourage you to... Think back over some of the decisions you made. Even if you 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 made some decisions and you and you never went back and you corrected them. You never went back and you apologized. You never went back because God God will bring back to your remembrance things that you have done, and it's up to us to correct them. It's up to us to do something. And so you know, we, like I said, we did the message on Abram and Lot. And so with that being said, you know. 
they had to separate to separate themselves because they got too big. But a, a Lot saw something. Lot chose his direction by what he saw. It looked good. And I was making decisions for myself because it looked good. I was hurt. I was mad. I was pain. I was in pain. I just wanted to get away. She didn't understand me. I wanted to just run. I was making no decisions on that. I wasn't basing my decisions on what, what kind of effect it's going to have on my kids, what kind of effect it's going to have on my wife, what kind of effect it's going to have on the people around me. I was so stubborn and so hard-headed, I ain't even care. So is your decisions causing you to be hard-headed? Are some of your decisions that, that you're making because you're hard-headed, because you're stubborn, because you're rebellious? Because if so, we got to get delivered from that. We got to get delivered from that. I'm, I'm, I'm just, listen, 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 I'm just being real. It's, I'm being real. I, I, I understand deliverance is the children's bread. So there's nothing wrong with constant deliverance. And if somebody's telling you, oh, you always get delivered, that's fine. Let me, I got a lot of stuff I'm dealing with. <laughs> really, I got a lot of stuff I'm dealing with. You know, I got to start a lot of stuff I'm dealing with because I got a big future in front of me. My destiny is huge. And so, yes, the enemy will try to pile on stuff that I never, ever get to my destiny in my future. And that's what happens when you, when you, when you, when I make a decision, I can, I can, I could have derailed my daughter's, um, um, dere uh, um, her destiny and purpose. All of my kids, I could have, I could have just easily de derailed them. But now, looking back at it and look at, and they're being a, they, they saw me in that place, but now they see me in this place. They see me in this place. When I tell you the relationships are, are, are different, they're different. Now I can, now I can literally, because I'm in place, I can literally speak into their destiny and purpose. Why? Because I come out of something now that I have authority over and I can eliminate them from going into that same place. Yes, they have a choice, but I can show put up the bumpers. I can put up the bumpers. The bumpers are my prayers. The bumpers are my declarations. So they can bump into it, but they still going to stay in lane. Y'all, I'm, I'm talking bold in that. Put the bumpers up. Keep it, yeah, they, they might try to go right, but the bumper will bring them back into the middle. It'll bring them back. They won't, they won't go into the gutter. So what are your prayers looking like? What are your declarations looking like? Are, have we repented? Have we, you, have we just repented for, for some of the decisions that we made and asked God to forgive us? Because know what? God is a forgiving God. I mean, he's forgiven all sins. I mean, as soon as, you, as soon as you repent and ask God for forgiveness, it's clean. It's clean. He don't even remember it. It's a done deal. So where are you with this? Where are you in this process? Where are you in this process? Where are you in this situation? It's never too late. It's never too late. All you got to do is just open your mouth and say, God, please forgive me. Please forgive me for my mistakes. Please forgive me for my decisions that I, I spend so much time as telling God, thank you, and, 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 and please forgive me. Because when I remember some stuff, I, I remember lying to somebody. I remember hurting someone's feelings. I remember, you know, all of these things, you know, the, 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 the women that I've, uh, feelings that I've hurt or, or, or caused them, you know, you know, not to be able to love a man because I was a user or I, I was a cheater or whatever, you know. And now that the now the effect that it has on their lives in regards to who they gonna marry, who they gonna date. I ain't, I wasn't thinking about that, but God is allowing me to see that. Think about that. So I I'm apologizing to y'all again. For if, I, if I ever hurt you, if I ever used you, if I've ever dated you, and I misused you, and I mistreated you, I apologize. Please forgive me. Please forgive me because I made some bad decisions. I've made some horrible decisions. And I thank God for, for as white as snow. I, play, I thank you for the blood of Jesus that cleanses. Because this is, this is, listen, man. Last night was, last night was off the chain. It was off the chain. The whole day was off the chain. We're here at our boot camp and, and God is 
it is like really, really, really and truly revealing some stuff that, and I had, listen, you know what? <laughs> Jesus help me, Lord. I literally had to come home. I had to come back to Florida to get this, this, this next level of release. This next level of a release. My, 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 my daughter lives here. She lives here. I watched my, I watched my wife hand her a microphone. That was like, that was like, um, um, passing the torch. I, I put a post up. I'm, 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 I'm proud to watch the mantle being passed. Now we got a bunch of spiritual daughters, but like Stephanie and, and Jennifer and, and th those are like the first, you know, but then God says there will be many. And we didn't understand what that meant, but we do understand what it means now because there are many, there are many. And so I, I constantly think about the decisions that I make in regard to them because they're not, they're, they're, they're not, None of these children are 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 lightweight. They walk heavy in the spirit. They walk heavy. And so me not being on my post, me not being right, me making bad decisions, that's 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 I, that, to me now is unacceptable. Because the lives that are in stake, the destinies that are in stake, the purpose that are in stake, they're looking and they're depending on 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 me. And so that weighs on me every single day. I don't get a break from it. And I'm okay with that. Listen, I'm okay with that. It keeps me in the lane. Hey, it keeps me in my lane. And I thank God for keeping me in my lane, using different things to keep me in my lane. Is it easy? No, it ain't easy. No, it's not easy. But I'm okay. I'm okay with it not being easy. I've already tried the easy way. That sucks. It sucks because you miss things. You neglect things. It becomes like a, a, a selfish thing. Really, you be, it be, it, it'll easily put you in a me, myself, and I. I feel this way. No. I take in consideration other people's feelings. And sometimes I get it wrong because I, I go to thinking, okay, it can't be that bad. Well, yeah, it might be. You don't know their feelings. I, I, have, to, I have to literally study the feelings of each and every one of our, our spiritual daughters and our spiritual sons. I have to pay attention to it. Just like I pay attention to my biological kids, I got to pay attention to them. Because God is going to hold me accountable for that. He's entrusted me with him spiritually. So if you've made, once again, if you made some decisions that, that haven't been good and you, and you have the opportunity to, to repent and ask for forgiveness, come on, just take that time. Just, let's just take this time right now and ask God, come on, bring back to you, ask God to the Holy Spirit to bring back to your remembrance the the bad decisions that you made and that that and and the effect that they had on others because when you when you know the effect that it has on others it 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 digs a little deeper that root is a lot deeper just so you know when you've made a decision that affects other people that root is a lot deeper that ain't just a a a, a little little root that ain't just a little plant that ain't just a little tear this is something that goes a little deeper so when you when you asking God to that you're repenting from your bad decisions that you made, you ask God to pull it up from the root. You know, forgive me. I mean, just forget, forgive me. And, and renounce the things that you've done. And God says, okay, I blotted that out. On to the next. And you just keep you you find your layers. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm listen. I, I've done a whole lot of stuff, so I got all. I got a. I got layers of deliverance, and God is just not gonna just deliver me, like He can. But I don't think He wants to. I think He wants me to learn 
the process of deliverance. Learn the process of going through layers. Learn the process. Why? Because I'm going to need to help somebody else. This is never about me. This doesn't stop with me. None of my decisions stop with me. None of my deliverance stops with me. None of, none of it. It don't stop with me. And I used to say, God, why I'm always, why, why I gotta be the one that has to, 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 to do all of this? Why do I have to be the one that, um, that, that have to, you know, lead people and do all of this stuff? And it was like, really? And then I go to, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking about, you know, when I was, I'm in Florida and my old church, my, my apostle made us all stand in a line, right? Like a whole, like a long line. It, I mean, it was families, it was couples, it was singles. There was a whole bunch of people in the line, right? And he said, turn around and look. And I said, we turned around and we looked, and all we saw was a long line of people. And he said, you guys, you guys are, 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 are responsible for that. And I'm looking at him like, at, and at this time, I, wasn't in, I really wasn't in a good place. I wasn't, you know, I, I wasn't feeling that. Uh, you know, I'm like, this ain't my church. Why? Why would I be? In, why would I be responsible for these people? You know what I'm saying? This is this is not that. You know, this is your this is y'all church. I this is why this is not me. We're not doing this. And so, um, that stuff always rung in my head. The decision that I made standing in the line that I wasn't gonna be responsible for these people behind me. I wasn't gonna do it. I said that in the line. I felt. I mean, I I ain't opened my mouth and said, but I I I was thinking it heavenly. And then I really told my wife, I'm like, why do we have to be responsible for them people? This ain't our church. So why should I be? Why should we be responsible for them? That that's not. How, I mean, that only make no sense to me. It didn't make logical sense. But what God was showing me, it was you're gonna be you're you're gonna be in a place where there's gonna be a line of people that's going to depend on you. He was given a prophetic act at that moment, and I was at a moment where I didn't even want that. And now I'm sitting here, and I I can promise you the line that we have now is 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 like five times or ten times longer than that line that I saw at that church. That I'm that that me and my wife are responsible for, so I can't afford to make jacked up decisions anymore. I can't. I can't. I got. I had to listen. I had to see God on doing this video. I was literally sitting there eating breakfast, like man, I don't want to do no video. My throat hurts. I just want to go back and lay down. Can I get like a few more minutes of sleep? No. Go go to go in the conference room and do this call and, and do this mess. I'm like, okay, all right. I get to the door, the door lock. I'm like, cool. I'm getting ready to go back. He said, you better look over there and sit down on that bench and do what I asked you to do. I'm like, wow. Like, wow. Is this 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 is this it? So I'm sitting here and 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 I'm doing this, but my mind is on. I had to make a decision. Am I gonna obey God? And do this broadcast, or am I gonna just walk up and go back to my room because the door is locked? I'm telling y'all, it's it's simple decisions that I have to make, and I have to make them all the time. And I and 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 God is speaking. God has never stopped speaking. I want y'all to know that God has never stopped speaking. Never stopped speaking. The problem is, are we listening? Are we listening? Are you listening? Because God is God has some plans, and and the only way you're gonna operate and walk in God's plans are you if you're listening to God's plans. So God is ready to restore. God is ready to rebuild. God is ready to reset, restore, regenerate. God is ready. He is ready. Are you ready? Are you ready to decide that I'm a lean, rely, and I'm a trust in God in everything? I'm gonna seek His face in everything that I go for your business, for your marriage, for your destiny, for your purpose, for your kids, for your uh, for your uh, your business. I mean, every as facet of your life. God, he says, He say, when you do something, you do it unto me. Every, give it all to me. Everything that you belong, everything that belongs to, everything that that you need, let it, you can have it. It, it. Give it to Him and let Him orchestrate it. Let him orchestrate it. 
this is listen. Come on, y'all. Come on. I know some of. I, I listen. I, I feel. I feel some of the 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 decisions. Listen. Don't go into condemnation. Don't don't go into condemnation because you'd have made some decisions that 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 wasn't good. Don't don't do that. Don't don't do that. You don't have to do that. You don't have to go into that place. You you don't have to go into that place because going into that place it, it's just setting you up. The enemy trying to set you up. So don't go in there. Just know that the blood of Jesus cleanses. Know that God has already forgiven you. All you got to do is repent, ask for forgiveness, and allow God to do what God going to do. God can do it better than you. God can restore you. If he did it for me, he is not a respecter of persons because if he did it for me, he'll do it for you. And I believe that. I wholeheartedly believe that. So I want you to get set, get ready for your new. I want you to get set, get ready for your reset, your reboot, because I think God is ready to take you from that old place to that new place or from one level to the next level. He does not want you to stay in this place. And he does not want you to feel like you can't win, like, you, like you're a loser. We buy in the losing spirit, the quitting spirit, the overwhelming spirit, that you're feeling overwhelmed. The word says, who the sun sets free is free indeed. I declare freedom and liberty over your mind. Over your mind. I'm declaring that you're free. Listen to me. I'm declaring that you're free. You're free from the torment of your bad decisions. You've been tormented for years. Every time you think about it, I mean, your heart ache, you get sick, you get depressed, you feel like God is not going to love you, God has forgotten about you, God said, I ain't never going to leave you nor forsake you. I'm with you. I'm with you. So listen, that's, that's not it. That's not it. That's not it. I declare that you're moving past this. I declare that this no longer will be a roadblock. This will no longer be a, a place where you are being literally uh, um, um, bushwhacked. I mean, it's like every time it comes up, it just, whew, it's like a tsunami. It just like takes everything away. You make, you lose your breath. You feel like you can't breathe anymore. I declare that the breath of life is upon you. I pray that God uh, God um, breathes on you right now in the name of Jesus. I declare that you will be set free and delivered. I declare that everything that used to cause you to go into a depressed state is being removed as far as the east is from the west. I declare that the blood of Jesus is upon you that cleanses you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. I declare that every decision that you make now will be a decision that God has given to you that you have um, that you have stepped into the uh, uh, the prayer closet and got an answer. Hmm. Yeah. No more making decisions out of your pain and out of your hurt. No more. No more. No more making decisions out of your anger. Now, in the name of Jesus, Father, deliver them from anger, anger of, of, of the bad decisions that they made, anger at, at the things that have caused them to make bad decisions. Now, in the name of Jesus, deliver them, Father God, from the, the pains of the past. Come on, the, the trauma that has caused them, Father God, to make bad decisions growing up. Now, in the name of Jesus, leading them to drugs, leading them to perversion, leading them to lust. I cancel it now in the name of Jesus. Father God, every tentacle, everything that, that is linked to it now in the name of Jesus. I renounce it now in the name of Jesus, Father. Oh, glory be to God. Glory be to God. Father, let them, now I declare now that they are a new creature now in the name of Jesus, Father God. They're walking in new blessings. They're walking in new faith. They're walking in new belief. They're walking, Father God, in a new understanding, Father God, of your love and your mercy and your grace now in the name of Jesus. Father, the atmosphere is conducive right now to deliverance. Father God, let them truly be delivered, Father God, now in the name of Jesus. Let the process begin, Father God, of the healing now in the name of Jesus. Jesus, Father. The heart is being healed now. Your soul is being healed now. Your soul is no longer being tormented, but it is being delivered. <laughs> Come on. It is being delivered now. In the name of Jesus, Father, I declare that they will move past all of the things that have caused them, Father God, to just be stagnant, Father God, to be at an arrested development stage now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
Lord, I thank you and I praise you right now for every diabolical plot, plan, and ploy that's been assigned against them, Father God, as a child. Now, in the name of Jesus, I declare, Father God, that it's broken now. In the name of Jesus, every networking scheme that's been set up now, all forms of witchcraft and black magic, white magic, hex and vexes, psychic prayers now. In the name of Jesus, going to the third eye, going to the psychics and trying to get a, a, a getting tarot card, reading tarot cards now, trying to get their life right. I counsel it now in the name of Jesus. On all third eye activity now. In the name of Jesus, I bind all root working now. In the name of Jesus, Father God. Yeah, that stuff that happened, that stuff that's been in generations, that's been locked in your bloodline, been locked in the DNA. Father, I declare that the DNA is being altered, it's being changed now. Father God, from what you, what they thought it would be to what it should be now in the name of Jesus, that they operate in your DNA, that they operate in kingdom now. In the name of Jesus, Father, their mindset is kingdom. They see kingdom, they think kingdom, they speak kingdom now. In the name of Jesus, their heart is in a kingdom place. In the name of Jesus. Oh, I speak for righteousness. I declare righteousness and holiness being upon this line now in the name of Jesus. Come on, every back, every cycle. We break every cycle, huh? Every demonic cycle, every demonic plan. Come on, these cycles that's been happening in your life, these cycles that's been happening from one generation to the next generation, we break them now in the name of Jesus. Come on, the cycles of health, bad health, these cycles of anger, these cycles of frustration, these cycles of light, lack, poverty, lust, perversion. Come on, come on. These depressions things, these suicidal things. Come on, that's, that's, that's causing you to think suicidal. I bind death, hell, and the grave. I declare that you will live and not die. You will be prosperous. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. God says that he wants you to, to live. He wants you to be prosperous. He wants you to have good health. I declare it over you now in the name of Jesus. Father, you are releasing them, Father God. You are releasing. I declare that the chains are being broken. I declare that the, 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 the cages are being broken. I declare that they're coming out of the caves now. In the name of God, I declare that you're coming out of hiding now. In the name of Jesus, you've been so embarrassed. You've been so ashamed of your life. I declare now that the blood of Jesus cleanses you. The blood of Jesus washes away, washes it away. Now the scales are being removed off of your eyes that you can see the hope of your calling, that you will walk in a new light, that you will walk, that they will walk in something brand new right now in the name of Jesus. I declare that there's a transformation happening. Now, in the name of Jesus, they're truly being transformed as I'm speaking, as I'm praying over them now. I declare that their mind is being transformed. Their mind is being renewed now in the name of Jesus. I declare that there's a new boldness coming forth now in the name of Jesus. There's a new fire that is being set off and lit off inside of them now in the name of Jesus. I declare that the deaf and dumb spirit is being removed as far as the east is from the west. They will, they will be able to hear what the Lord says. They will be able to operate and articulate the word of God. They will be able to um, speak in wisdom and understanding. They will be able to operate, Father God, and, and they, they will be able to speak things into existence. They will speak with boldness. They will speak with fire now in the name of Jesus. Now I bind the spirit of backlash and retaliation. Everything that tries to come at them, Father God, to, 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 to hinder them, to stop them from functioning and operating in who you have called for them to be, I declare that this is the day that the Lord has made, and Father, they will rejoice and be glad in it. I thank you, Father God, for the for a spirit of gladness, a spirit of joy being upon them now. In the name of Jesus, Father, the enemy has stolen their joy, but Father, you have come to give them back the joy, the joy of the Lord. Come on, the joy of the Lord. I declare the joy of the Lord. Come on, come on. Somebody needed the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord. I declare the joy of the Lord being upon you. Come on, joy of of the Lord, Michelle, joy of the Lord being upon you. Jennifer, joy of the Lord being upon you. Mama Kim, the joy of the Lord is upon you. The prophetic anointing is upon you. I thank you right now. Jennifer, come on. Uh, um, Tanika, the joy of the Lord is upon you. Come on. It's on you. It's on you. It's on you. Come on. The joy of the Lord is my strength. There you go. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I speak supernatural strength upon you. Supernatural strength upon you. Come on. Come on. Come on. Alkesha, come on. The joy of the Lord. Come on. 
Come on, Stacia. Come on, girl. Come on. Come on. I'm on you. The joy of the Lord. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Tamisha, the joy of the Lord. Come on, Keila, the joy of the Lord. Let's go. Come on. We got to get supernatural strength. Crystal, the joy of the Lord. Come on, Cheryl, the joy of the Lord. Let's go. Christy, joy of the Lord. Come on, come on, Don, joy of the Lord. Come on, is upon me. Let him rest upon you. Let him rest upon you. Father, let just, Sabrina, let it rest upon you. Uh, uh, um, Natasha, let it rest upon you. Now, Tammy, let it rest upon you. I declare that the joy of the Lord rest upon you. Rest upon your household. Rest upon your life. Now, in the name of Jesus, Lisa Ray. Come on, come on. The joy of the Lord is upon you. I let it rest upon you. Let it rest upon your household. Now in the name of Jesus, Shalani, the joy of the Lord is upon your household and upon you now in the name of Jesus, Father. I declare it now. Christina, this joy of the Lord is upon you and your husband now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you for opening the windows of heaven, Father God, and pouring out the joy of the Lord upon them. Now in the name of Jesus, Lord, the joy of the Lord is upon you. In the name of Jesus, I declare that the strength of the Lord is there. The strength of the Lord is strengthening you in the time of need. The strength, Father God, supernatural strength, supernatural joy, supernatural freedom now. In the name of Jesus, Father God, is upon this line. Come on now, door is upon you. Come on. Tanika is upon you. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Y'all got to have this. Y'all got to get this word. I want it to be upon you. I want the joy. I want you no longer. I don't want you to feel like you got to walk around being angry. No longer you got to walk. Let's go. We talking about joy. Don't get all. We done let the enemy beat us up too way too long. Now it's time to take it back. Come on. We got to get the joy of the Lord. We got to take this thing back. So I'm declaring the joy of the Lord is upon y'all. And it's upon your household. It's upon your bloodline. Come on, depression can no longer grip you. Depression is no longer going to take hold, take root in your family. It's not going to happen. I, I bind it now in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for the authority to speak things into existence. So I declare that the joy of the Lord is their strength. The joy of the Lord is upon them. The joy of the Lord is in their home. Father God, is upon their lips now. In the name of Jesus. Father God, let them sing the joy of the Lord. Let, let them sing, Father God, a new song. Let a song of the Lord come upon, our, come upon their lips lips, Father God, as they're singing now in the name of Jesus. Father God, as they're worshiping and as they're praising you now. Father God, as they're operating in a new dance now in the name of Jesus. Father God, let the prophetic words come off of their lips. Let prophetic words, Father God, move on their feet now in the name of Jesus. I declare it, Father, now in the name of Jesus. Households will no, never be the same. Households will never go back, Father God. Bloodlines will be, all to be changed, Father God, for kingdom. They will be changed, Father God, for the strength of the Lord. They will, people will be asking, where do you get your strength from? And then they will be able to articulate, be able to give them the scriptures, be able to, to tell them where the joy has come from. Because the people will remember when, when they were down. People will remember when they were hurt. But the God says, oh, go, I come to bring the strength to you. I've come to bring joy to you. Come on, y'all. Let's go. Let's go. Get your joy. Get your joy back. Come on. Take your joy back. Come on. Take it back. Take it back. Take it back. Listen. Come on. Come on. Take it back. I thank y'all for taking it back. I thank y'all for rocking with me. I thank you. Father God, I thank you now for each and every person that's upon this line, Father God, that have put in a word, the joy of the Lord is their strength. The Father God, and I pray that the joy of the Lord is their strength. I pray that the joy of the Lord is upon them. I pray, Father God, that their household is delivered. I pray household salvation. I pray, Father God, the blessings of the Lord, I mean, just, just overtake them today, Father God. Let them roll and bask in you, Father God. Let your angels descend upon their homes, Father God, and let the angels minister to them. Father God, today in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, we ask you to show up and show out, Father God, for the second day of this boot camp. Father God, you have started it out with a bang, Father God, and I know you're going to finish it, Father God, with a finale. I thank you, Father God, that every angel that is assigned to this place is, is in this place now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father God, for new revelation being, re being released in this boot camp now in the name of Jesus. Father, let the fire of the Lord be upon the altar in this room now in the name 
name of Jesus, Father. I thank you for every participant that is here, Father God. I thank you, Father, they're receiving everything that they need, everything, Father God, that'll take them to another level now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father God, as upgrades are coming forth, Father God. I thank you, Father, they're able and eligible to receive their upgrades now in the name of Jesus. I bind all forms of backlash and retaliation, everything that tries to get back at their dedication and at their at their um um their ability, Father God, to receive now in the name of Jesus. Father, that they will not only be hearers of the word, but they will be doers of your word. Father God, that this day they will be obedient. Father, I thank you that now every day they wake up, Father God, they will make godly decisions. Father God, you will be part of their decision making, Father God. No longer will it be them, but it will be you. Father God, as we decrease, you increase. Let it be none of us and all of you today. In Jesus' name I pray. I love you, Father. I love each and every one of you. Y'all be blessed.